beautiful person. Here we go again. Day six. Six <laughs> of the 14 day challenge, almost halfway there. And I am still talking about Carol Dweck's book, Mindset. And this evening, I'm going to talk about business and leadership and mindset. Because, you know, people go to business school, people do all sorts of things to become leaders, whether they're in a nonprofit organization, whether they're in a business, a giant business, a small business. If you're a one person business, you're still a leader and you have to figure out how to do this uh, to the best of your ability. So uh, we've been talking in the past few, six days, about uh, the idea of mindset, that there are basically two mindsets, although everybody really is a combination of both. Nobody's purely one or purely the other, I don't think. But uh, there's the fixed mindset in which people believe that whatever talent and ability and intelligence that they have is fixed and there's nothing to be done about it. And furthermore, if they've always been told that they're smart, then they think they're superior to other people, but then they also feel that they constantly have to prove it. And uh, the other thing about the fixed mindset is that um, people who are in the fixed mindset have uh, are afraid to take on new challenges it's more important to appear smart and successful effortlessly you know oh you make it look so easy rather than um, to put in some honest effort and improve themselves and then on the other side we have the growth mindset in the growth mindset people are willing to grow they believe that with good teaching and effort coaching they can actually improve their own uh, capability seems kind of obvious when you put it like that, but it's quite amazing how many people hold really tightly to the idea that they're unnatural, that their talent is going to carry them through. I know for myself, when I was a child, I uh, thought that uh, effort was not necessary. I was just so smart and talented. I could just coast through everything and everything would come easily to me. And I didn't really want to do things that didn't come easily to me. And then when I was in university, I crashed hard and I learned that you really can't do anything worthwhile without effort. And now I'm 58 years old, and I'm finally learning how to really channel my uh, my efforts and my learning and the coaching that I'm fortunate to receive into building something worthwhile, which also goes to show that it's never too late to change your mindset. So anyway, this is chapter chapter five of the book on mindset. She's talking about business and leaders. I'm just gonna bring up my notes. I'm not gonna talk about the whole chapter because it's a lot, but uh, I've got this Google doc that I made with the uh, notes. So I'm just gonna quickly, she start, this book uh, first came out in 2006. So some things are a little uh, behind the times, but uh, still the points that she makes are really good. So she starts with uh, talking about Enron which was, of course, the big deal at that time. And uh, basically, there were this whole obsession with talent. I mean, you hear it to this day. People are like, oh, you know, this person is a windowkin. This person is so talented. This person can do miracles. And again, kind of effortlessly, you know, everything they touch turns to gold. Well, remember, Midas' story actually didn't turn out so well. And then, so if you are, if you are, creating a culture in a business, and particularly she was talking about uh, Enron, but in, really in any organization, where you have an obsession with talent. And this can be as true in a network marketing team or in a nonprofit as it can be in a business. If you have created a culture where people are required to look and act extraordinarily talented, you know, they have to be these talent, super talented people who just do everything effortlessly, then um, they can't admit to any flaws or mistakes because they're going to crash, right? They have to admit that they're not perfect, God forbid. Then it also means that if they have made a mistake, they have no way to correct what they've done, and then they run things into the ground. I'm reminded, this is a different book that I was listening to a couple of months ago, and it was uh, Ryan Halliday's Ego is the Enemy, and he was talking exactly about this, about people's inability to see beyond themselves and to understand that reality says you have to make changes sometimes. And then she refers to uh, Jim Collins' uh, book, uh, Good to Great, which is uh, 
a really good book in which he looks at different companies and he looks at which ones have become great and which ones were able to become great and stay there and then which ones became briefly great and then crashed again and the ones that just were worked into the ground and i'm not going to go into all the details but basically she says or she quotes jim collins as saying that a leader that takes a company to great and the ability to stay there is someone who is constantly trying to improve and look squarely at mistakes and deficiencies including their own this is really important if you remember a previous uh, video I'm talking about sports, I was talking about Jim McEnroe, John McEnroe, and his inability to uh, take responsibility whenever things didn't go right for him. There was always somebody else. And when you have um, a leader of any organization who is incapable of taking responsibility, then it's always somebody else's fault and things are never going to be made better. So she talks about this the CEO disease, which is a, basically a gargantuan ego and the assumption that some people are inherently uh, superior to others and they're constantly having to prove their own superiority. And she talks about Lydia Coca, and she talks about Al Dunlap and she talks about Enron and AOL Time Warner. And these are all examples of companies where the leaders were so busy with their own ego and basically surrounded themselves with yes sayers so that they were incapable of seeing what needs to be done and eventually of course ran their companies into the ground and then she also talks about uh, growth leaders like jack welsh and lou gerstner and Anne volcari i think that's how you pronounce it and um, i think i'm going to talk about those in my next video because time is moving on here but uh, I do want to uh, tell you about this Google Doc that I've been making. I think it's going to be really, really helpful because if all this whole series of, uh, of videos is getting to be a bit much for you to be able to see all these different aspects of the fixed mindset and the growth mindset. And tomorrow I'm going to talk about, about business leaders who have a growth mindset. So stay tuned for tomorrow. Then... Um, if you find that this sort of uh, thing is getting to be a little hard to keep track of, this Google Doc that I've been making is really helpful. Hey, I had to refer to it myself. It's a lot of stuff, but it's really worth learning about because mindset is everything. If you are trying to improve your life in any way, whether it's your body, your mind, your financial circumstances, any changes that you're trying to make in your life, you really need to understand mindset. So. If you would like access to this Google Doc completely for free, drop me a message. I'll be totally happy to send it to you. It's been really helpful for me, and I think it's going to be helpful for you to just have everything in a row, the most important points, and because mindset is everything. So you have a great evening. Remember, I love you. Talk to you again soon. Drop me a message if you want access to this Google Doc again tomorrow. Bye.